Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is not your first time on the channel, make sure you hit subscribe before you get too far and realize this content is absolute garbage and you won't want to subscribe going forward. If this is not your first time on the channel though, welcome back. There might be something wrong with you. You may want to seek some help. But regardless, thank you very much for coming along. For today's video, we are going to show you the Mutant Archetype, a TCG exclusive, so we get to do all the exciting discovery of this deck. In today's video, you're not going to walk away an expert, but you are going to walk away with a good, solid knowledge of the basics that you need to be better prepared to run the deck for yourself or to defeat it. As a side note, if you are looking to pick up some of the cards after this video is done, you've decided that this is the archetype for you, go ahead and check the link out in the description to Jam Jam Cards UK to get yourself a cheeky discount on their eBay store, courtesy of yours truly. And our last final note before we go anywhere, there are some deck lists available at the end of the video. We'll go into more detail when that comes up. In either case, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck right in to the video. The Mutant Archetype debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG as an exclusive in the Phantom Rage Core Booster set at the tail end of 2020, a year widely regarded as the worst fucking year in recorded history. The archetype is made up of mostly psychic monsters of varying attributes, although there's a few other types thrown into the mix, particularly once you get to the higher level monsters. The lower level main deck monsters, however, are made up of water attributes. As a quick note on the appearance of the cards, we should note that it appears that the high level monsters are versions of the lower level ones that have merged, evolved, or even taken host of other things. For example, Mutant Beast looks a bit like a mixture of one of those little mutants with some sort of animal or, well, beast as the clue is in the name, and Arsenal looks like a machine that's been taken control of by one of these ugly ass little alien things. The fusions, on the other hand, look a little like they're some sort of mixed up version of the other mutants combined together. Hence, they are fusions and they've come out looking like hydras. The deck is still very much in its infancy at the time of recording, and of course we don't have any OCG lists to leech some ideas off. There does, however, seem to be a good amount of interest in the deck, so it'll be good to see exactly where this takes us. Early testing seems to indicate that the biggest issue the deck has is consistency, so you'll really want to think about this when you're making your builds. So how does the Mutant Archetype play? The deck has a focus on banishing and special summoning, primarily summoning the little guys, searching and adding from the deck, and then using their effects to tribute off with another card to make one of the bigger mutants. The bigger mutants all have some built-in protection of some description, including the fusion monsters. The deck does have a good ability to recycle its materials too, which means it can stop itself from burning out too quickly, as well as a decent ability to interrupt the opponents and stop them from gaining too much advantage. Again, as mentioned earlier, the biggest weakness that the deck faces is consistency, so hopefully with future support, as we normally get with TCG exclusives, we can hope to see something of a consistency boost. In the meantime, you'll really want to take advantage of the existing psychic support, as well as things like Part of Extravagance and so on and so forth, in order to boost those consistency levels to make the deck playable. It's also still at a point where it kind of is a little bit more malleable because we don't have all the support we need, so you can look to other archetypes as engines, or even use this as an engine, to see if you can kind of mitigate some of those issues that we talked about earlier. For the next part, we're going to be taking a look through the mutant cards. It's worth noting that there's no real defined way to play the deck just yet, or too much of a consensus on ratios, so much of this will be a case of testing and understanding what works well for you and for your particular build. I will be reading the effects somewhat shortened in order to save some time, however I'll be showing the cards on the screen for your perusal, so you can get an idea of exactly how they interact, but given that you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player, we all know that you won't be reading a fucking thing. As one last note before we continue, you'll notice there are some clues in the names as to what the cards on the smaller ones search. M, S, T, and G, B, A, T, A. I'll let you figure the rest out for yourself. So we start off with Mutant M05. You can tribute this card, then banish one from your hand, or face up on your field to special summon one monster from your hand or deck based on the banished card. If you banished a monster, you can summon Mutant Beast. If you banished a spell, you can summon Mutant Mist. And if you banish a trap, you can summon Mutant Arsenal. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Mutant ST46. If it's summoned, you can add a mutant spell or trap from your deck to your hand. 
You can tribute this card, then banish one from your hand or face up on your field to special summon one monster from your hand or deck based on the type of banished card. And exactly as before, if you banish a monster, you can get Mutant Beast. If you banish a spell, you can get Mutant Mist. And if you banish a trap, you can get Mutant Arsenal. Each effect is a hard one per turn. Mutant GB88. During your opponent's main phase, if Mutant Evolution Lab is on your field, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. If it's special summoned during the opponent's turn, you can tribute it, banish a card from your hand or face up on your field to special summon a level 8 mutant monster that is banished or in your graveyard. Each effect is a hard ones per turn. Mutant Arsenal. It can't be special summoned except with the effect of a mutant card. It can't be targeted by an opponent's trap effect. You can use each of the following effects once per turn. When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you can banish one card from your hand or field, then target and banish a monster on the field. If this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target and add a banished mutant spell to your hand. Mutant Beast It can't be special summoned except with the effect of a mutant card. It can't be targeted by an opponent's monster effects, and then each of the following effects can be used once per turn. When your opponent activates a spell card or effect, quick effect, you can banish one card from your hand or field to negate the activation and banish that card. If this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can add one of your banished mutant trap cards to your hand. Mutant Mist. It can't be special summoned except with the effect of a mutant card. It can't be targeted by an opponent's spell effects. You can use each of the following effects once per turn. When your opponent activates a trap card or trap effect, quick effect, you can banish a card from your hand or field to draw two cards. If this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can add one of your banished mutant monsters to your hand. And then lastly, we move on to the extra deck options. Mutant Synthesis. It requires two mutants with different attributes. If it's fusion summoned, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. When your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can activate this effect. For the rest of the turn, this face-up card is unaffected by the effects of opponent's cards of the same type as that card, e.g. monster, spell, trap. If this fusion summon card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can add a banished mutant card to your hand. Each of these effects is a hard ones per turn. And then lastly, for our monsters, we have Mutant Ultimus. It requires three level eight or higher mutants. When a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can banish a mutant card from your hand, graveyard, or face up on your field of the same type to negate and banish that card. If this fusion summon card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can add up to three banished mutant cards, up to one each of monster, spell, or trap, to your hand. Each effect is a hard once per turn. For the next part of this video, we're going to be quickly running through the spell and trap support available to the deck. We start off with Mutant Blast. Equip only to a level 8 or higher mutant you control. At the start of the damage step, if the equipped monster attacks an opponent's special summon monster, you can banish that monster. When this card is equipped to a monster, you can banish this card, send the equipped monster to the graveyard, and then special summon a level 8 mutant monster with a different original attribute from your hand or deck. This effect is a hard ones per turn. Mutant Evolution Lab when this card is activated, you can special summon one of your level 4 or lower mutants from your hand or that is banished. Mutants you control gain 100 attack for each banished mutant card with a different name. Once per turn during your main phase, you can place one mutant card from your hand onto the bottom of your deck and then draw a card. You can only activate one copy of Mutant Evolution Lab per turn. Mutant Fusion if Fusion summons a Mutant Fusion by banishing fusions listed on it from your hand or field. However, if your opponent has activated a card or effect this turn, you can use up to one monster each from your deck and graveyard as materials. You can only activate this card once per turn. And lastly, we have Mutant Cry. During the main phase, Fusion summon a Mutant Monster from your extra deck by shuffling into your deck materials that are on your field in your graveyard or your face up banished cards. You can only activate one copy of Cry per turn. As mentioned earlier, at the time of recording, there's no real consensus on the direction the deck should be taking, as well as the correct ratio, so playtesting will be key. For this section, we'll be briefly discussing some non-mutant options you could consider using in your builds. This list is not exhaustive, but you should hopefully get some ideas of things that you can try out for yourself. Psychic shit. This one is pretty obvious, but also pretty vast, and I couldn't really think of a better way to summarise it other than to just say psychic shit. 
There's so much to choose from, but you'll find great support from cards like Emergency Teleport, Cyframe Support, Psychic Weed Dealer, and much, much more. Ranky Boys. There's a good number of XE monsters you could look into. The deck has a decent enough ability to pump out rank 8s relatively consistently, so using cards such as Dingus who could be an excellent option. You could also look to take advantage of cards such as Levier, the Sea Dragon, which has a particularly good synergy, being able to overlay to special them on back from the little aliens and then gain their effects from there. And the last one I wanted to mention here is Fusion Support. Another one that again I believe is pretty obvious as a choice to consider, though deck's main boss monsters are based out of fusion, so using some of the stuff to abuse this seems fairly sensible to me. Cards like Super Poly are an absolute fucking joke, so it'd be sensible not to overlook employing them into your own strategy. You can also use cards such as the absolutely busted Predaplant Vert Anaconda and all the relevant Super Poly targets too. And for the final part of the video, we're going to do a quick rundown of some sample lists I've thrown together. It's worth noting that these aren't perfect, nor are they super tried and tested, so you should take them with a pinch of salt. As YouTubers are notoriously bad at creating decks, therefore, use them for yourself, try them out, make the tweaks, make better judgments than I, and go from there. However, if you are considering rushing out to buy the card, you should definitely check out the link in the description to Jam Jam Cards UK and net yourself a cheeky discount on their eBay store. Again, just to reiterate, the intention here is just to give you some idea of ratios you could try out, some options you could consider, some techs, some different types of builds you could look into.
This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.